Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Allen Major Show here at Wild Wing Cafe University, the Wild Wing Cafe broadcast booth alongside the Niners head coach, Allen Major, with Lanny Ford. I am Matt Swarad. Glad to have you along here tonight. It is our final show before the conference tournament begins for the Niners next week. We've got two more regular season games to go before we get to tournament action. Uh, we got uh, Duquesne coming up on Wednesday night back at Halton, which will be the final home game of the season. And we travel to play Xavier on Saturday at the Cintas Center in Cincinnati to finish up the regular season. We're here until 8 o'clock. We'd love to hear from you. Our phone number is 704-332-0173. 704-332-0173. Coach, good to see you. And How you getting doing, down guys? to I'm doing great. Yourself? <laughs> good. Sorry. <laughs> A little bit late there. The traffic uh, is weird. It's coming down trying. It's never it's never backed up. So I don't know if it was uh, you know Duquesne or Xavier people trying to back up the traffic there, uh, <laughs> trying to get here. But anyway, good seeing you guys as always. Coach, we've got the last week of the regular season. And, uh, boy, for me, the year's just kind of flown by. And uh, yeah. now we're getting to crunch time. And uh, your thoughts on, uh, you know, this final week and what uh, is ahead for the Niners. And, and, of course, first up is Duquesne. Yeah, well, I think, you know, we talked to the guys today about just, you know, the opportunity. I mean, you want to finish strong at home. And, and really, even though they had the ceremony Saturday, you know, Wednesday's kind of, a, in a sense, a real senior day or senior night uh, in, in terms of the true last home game. So, um, obviously, wanting to finish strong at home is a priority. And then, you know, uh, we just kind of told the guys, hey, you know, they got Xavier right now as one of the last four out. Uh, or in, depending on how you want to word it, as the NCAA uh, is tournament approaches. So um, you got a chance to be spoilers. You, know, you can go, on over, go over there and, and uh, play our tails off, lost to them by four here. So we got a little incentive uh, in terms of going over there. So I think you use that uh, you know, as fuel to motivate you for the week. So those are just kind of a couple of the points we made to the guys. You know, when you look at the, the conference as a whole, uh, it looks like no matter what happens this week, the Niners have one of those final spots in the conference tournament. Um, so you, you look at this last Saturday, it was almost like a perfect storm in, in a negative sense for the conference. And, and still, as you talk about Joel Lenardi, still I think four teams today are, are in with right. two really kind of teetering. And they're teetering now because of all the upsets over this past weekend. Exactly. And it goes back to what we are talking about all season long. It's been a crazy league in that there's no gimme wins. Right. No, exactly. And, and whoever ends up with, with buy spots in the conference tournament, I mean, I think that's just going to be the matter of where you are on a bracket because, um, you know, whoever you face after that, that buy, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it could easily be a toss-up. I mean, and it's a chance. It's probably going to be somebody that's beaten somebody already, um, you know, depending on how all that shakes down. So, um, in a it, – I think it's been as strong as the A-10 has been in a long, long time. And, and someone asked me the question today about, you know, our improvement. And I, I feel like we made strides this year. What's been relative is how well the A-10 jumped. <laughs> and so our jump, you know, in a normal year is probably a little bit more significant than it, even than it was. But um, it, this league has been something else. When you, uh, if you go back and look, I know I was looking at some of the notes on Saturday night, you go back and look at preseason, how some of the teams were projected to be, uh, except for maybe three or four, it's pretty jumbled yeah. as far as where people thought teams would be. And it's really exactly. the, the top and the bottom, everything else in the middle is not the way it was expected to be. Exactly. And then Saturday you had the three big upsets. And like Matt said, now you know that you're, you're in the tournament does that take anything off of this game? Is it going to be hard to get the guys motivated for, for Saturday, knowing that they've at least reached that goal to make the A-10 tournament? Yeah, I hope not. You know, uh, you'd like to stay hungry uh, at this time of year. And, again, yeah, I think that's one of the things uh, that we talked about in terms of the incentive, you know, for this week is that, um, you know, here's a team we haven't played yet. Uh, so, you know, kind of like St. Bonaventure, I mean, you got a chance to, Finish strong at home. I think just from a prideful standpoint, you want to do that. And then, you know, I kind of I've been in the spoilers chair, you know, <laughs> before at places I've been, and where you have a chance to kind of, you know, uh, spill somebody's punch you know, in terms of a celebration. Obviously, if Xavier wins at home, uh, that'll increase their you know ability to to bolster their their resume. Uh, if we you know go over there and, and play to our max level the way we're capable of playing, hey, anything can happen. Um, and now you can you can kind of muddy the waters for them a little bit. So um, 
to me, that, that's what we tried to relay to them. And you want to make sure that, that, that you do stay hungry because the, the ultimate thing is improving your level of play. You know, regardless of the games, you want to improve how you're playing on both sides of the ball. Let's give the phone number again, 704-332-0173, the Allen Major Show here at Wild Wing Cafe University. If you're in the area, stop on by. We're here until 8 o'clock. Uh, taking your phone calls and talking Niner basketball tonight. Coach, a as you look ahead, and it is difficult because you have two games still to play, and we haven't played Duquesne yet, but mm -hmm. you look at who you've played so far this season in the conference, and it's all about matchups when you get into postseason play. You've got to play so many games. It's a short period of time. Right. Who do the Niners, in your opinion right now, match up best against out of the group of teams that you could possibly play? Well, uh I'll go on the other side of it. I mean, look, looking at all the league games, we've really only had two that I felt like got away from us. Um, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, a, a game like Dayton, you know, I thought we really you know, had a shot at that one. I mean, they made some free throws down the stretch. Johnson made some big threes. Uh, but in terms of a team that I felt like, you know, we could compete with, you know, I, I thought we did. Uh, believe it or not, I thought we played pretty well at LaSalle with the exception of a stretch, you know, in that second half. I mean, it's 51-50. Uh, we had a miss. They go down, score, and just a couple of plays kind of tilted the game. Um, uh, obviously, you know, uh, being on the road at Richmond, we were right there. Um, One-point loss. St. Louis, one-point loss. We're right there. Uh, Xavier, four-point loss. One possession game, 16 seconds to go. So, I – it's, it's tough to really pinpoint um, one or two teams in particular because, you know, we've really, with the exception of, you know, Temple and Saturday, we've been right there, you know, with everybody. And you, you're talking about a handful of plays and, you know, you could be eight and five or seven and, uh, or seven and five and eight and four. So that's just how fine the line has been in this league. It's been incredible. You know, when you when you look at the, uh, at the league as a whole and you start to think about the tournament, I won't skip up there just for a second. Mm -hmm what I call the play-in round or the round that, that we would be in the non-buy round, it's not like some other terms. You get a day off. Do you think that hurts or helps? I mean, I know you got an extra game to play, but it's right. not like you're playing a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back like they like do in the ACC. Right. No, I think the fact that you, you in a sense, keep playing is right. probably not a bad thing. Yeah, uh, because uh, sometimes if you get a few days or you get five to six days or almost a week, uh, I know being in the Big Ten, you know, uh, we'd get a bye and we wouldn't play. You know, we play on a – sometimes on a Saturday, and then the conference tournament would start on a Thursday. But then we, you know, usually have a bye in the first round, wouldn't play till Friday. And so that you can get a little stale depending on, you know, the type of team you have. And, and with us, you know, I, I would rather keep playing as opposed to having some time off. Coach, I want to get your opinion on this. I, I know how I feel in that, you know, the conference tournament comes around. It seems like it, it's, it's a reward in that, I think everyone should go, mm -hmm. but just the, to plan a tournament atmosphere and to be at the same site, I just like having it all in one place. And it's going to go back to being all in one place next season right. in Brooklyn. But the last couple of years where you have that first game on a, on a campus site, it just seemed to me take yeah. something away from it. I'm with you. And, and it doesn't feel like you're in a tournament. Yeah, I'm with you. No, I, 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 we talk about that at the conference meetings uh, in the springtime. And, you know, guys went back and forth on it. And, and I was of the, the vote that, everybody should go, um, you know, just from the standpoint of that conceivable chance of, hey, you all competed against each other. You played the same number of league games all season long, and here it is all of a sudden, you know, there's two teams that are kind of out of the mix. Well, um, why, if, if it's going to be that, then maybe you should only maybe, maybe only have eight teams go to the thing then, and then you cut out, <laughs> you know, a lot of other guys <laughs> as opposed to – so, uh, but no, I, I think that, and also I like everybody at the same side. I think it really gives that true feeling of being at a conference tournament, especially for the fans. Yeah, and they have the shoot-around sessions for the practice the day before. They, you, know, you, get a, you get an hour on the floor. People right. come on and watch. Yep. And, and it gives you the feel of, of what it will be like if you go to the next round, the NCAA tournament. Exactly. A lot of the same things. The guys stay at the same hotel. They get to interact with the other teams. And, and yep. it's just, to me, it's a lot more fun. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I totally agree. But you'll lose that day break. If you go to that scenario, they won't give you that day break. You'll play day after day after day. You w it will be tougher to play that right. extra game as far as the legs are concerned. Yeah, I, I would agree. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think when – The experience, though, would be better. Yeah, and, and I think players, you know, um, you find ways to get off your feet and rest guys. And, and uh, you know, I mean, if you're a player and you're playing at that time of the year, 
and you, you, you know if that's at stake, why not play every day? Because that's like the playground. I mean, once you're done, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, you're going home. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you had a chance to play in, in you know, back to back to back, you know, no big deal. I go back a few years ago, we played Rhode Island to finish out the regular season. And uh, we had a plan begin on the first round of the conference tournament, but it was a neutral site. It was a great game. Yeah. It was a fantastic Niner comeback. We won that game to go on to the next round. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you look at the, the, the hypothetical situations that could arise this year. If we finish at Xavier, there's always a chance that we could go back to Xavier. Right. And, and to me, that just takes away from the tournament field. Right. No, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, I think everybody in the same spots, you know, definitely the way to go. But what do I know? There. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're sitting there, and I'm sitting here. So, <laughs> Our phone number is 704-332-0173. Now, going into this game against Duquesne, here's a team that in recent years, Coach Everhart has really amped up the, the, the style of play they wanted to run. We haven't seen them this year. They, they lost some of the key players from last season. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the Dukes and, and what we can expect to see on Wednesday night. Yeah, um, you know, typically the, you know, they're playing four guards right now. Um, and uh, – not a, a ton of post play in terms of back to basket production, but you know those their bigs are kind of like finishers. But uh, you know their quarterback is McConnell. Um, he's really good. Um, you know, coach's son, uh, terrific passer. Uh, but they've got some guys on the perimeter that were back from last year. Sean Johnson uh, was a returning perimeter guy, very good player. Uh, B.J. Montero on the perimeter, very good player. Those three guys kind of anchor their scoring. And what you're going to see is a you know, they will try to run anytime they can, up tempo. Uh, another thing you'll see is them uh, trying to possibly press, pick up full court. Um, they're at their best if they feel like they can get the game going up and down and almost like a ragtag deal. Whereas we'd like to have a little bit more control over the tempo, get the ball inside, uh, force them to, to, uh, to play at our pace and our tempo as opposed to us going at theirs. There have been times, though, that – we will start to mimic whatever's playing instead of staying inside of our game. Right. We'll start to try to play the same game that they're playing instead of that's not our strong suit. We need to stay inside the game plan that we came in with. Right. Uh, unless that's done with opportunity. Right. And, right. I, and I, I agree with you. If that's done with opportunity. Sure, you take advantage of that. Yeah. And then, then you kind of ease back into your, your, you know, staying in your lane. So I think the good teams find a way to play at all tempos uh, because that's what the month of March dictates is that um, depending on the environment you're in, and if you had that advantage where you could get somebody going up and down, then you want to make sure you, you take that. But even still, when you're doing that, you always want to make sure you do it within your character. So, Do you think we match up better when it's a, a guard type setup versus a big setup? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, I mean, we played JB this year. We technically kind of moved him over uh, one slot. Uh, last year, he kind of played the three. And, uh, you know, Matt, you remember, you know, played almost like traditional two big guys, mm -hmm. you know, last year. So we've just kind of taken JB and slid him over. Um, so in a sense, defensively, it's probably helped us match up a little bit with, with teams that, that play guards because what that's done is it doesn't force sometimes for, for JB, doesn't force him to guard a 6'8", 6'9", guy. So, um, uh, but, you know, from game to game, that's different because there's some teams that will play, you know, Xavier plays two traditional bigs at times. So you have to find ways to adjust. But um, I think when a team's a, a notch smaller, that probably helps us match up a little bit. Continuing with the uh, Bojangles uh, bow time segment here, Coach, and, and looking at Duquesne and looking forward, um, you know, when K.J. Sherrill went out with his injury, Ilya Ivankovic slides back in as the backup to Chris Braswell. Uh, you don't have any more depth after Ilya on the bench in that, in that post position unless you move some guys around and play a little bit smaller. Right. You had been having the luxury a little bit of, of playing Braswell and KJ together. Yeah. But that changes now some of the things that you can do because you don't want to have either Chris or Ilya at the same time then somebody picking up two quick fouls and you're in trouble. Right. It changes what you can do. It, it does. It, it, it's, it pinches your rotation a little. And I think the thing you got to be aware of is that um, – you can play two guys together like that. The, the key is making sure they just don't get winded at the same time. True. Yeah. And then now you've got to, you know, what you try to do is get one guy out, uh, let the other guy go for a little bit, uh, especially if it's before media, then he can get through the media and you come back, and, you know, with the other guy. So, uh, but it's a big difference going from three to two, you know, with bigs. Um, when you have three guys, you know, we went yeah. through that last year. 
Uh, and it, it kind of became KJ and Braz, you know, for really the back part of the season. So, um, but, you know, we, we, this is about the fourth different team we've coached <laughs> in the same year in terms of, you know, the lineup. So, uh, yeah, you try to go next man up and, and you adjust and keep on going. Just so happens, Ilya is here tonight. He's our guest. Yeah. We'll be talking to him coming up in a little bit. Speaking of the devil, he's sleep over there. I think he might be <laughs> dozing. Wake him up. <laughs> Throw some water in his face. I think he's watching the uh, <laughs> the game on TV over there. It, he played, I thought, really well coming off the bench against St. Bonaventure. He did. And really active out there, going after loose balls, keeping rebounds alive. Mm -hmm. and, and talk a little bit about uh, what he brings to the table. Yeah, what he brings is, you know, um, even though he's, he, he, he's from Croatia, what you get is – he had a taste of Charlotte in terms of being here already, uh, being here in high school, you know, knowing a little bit about the university, probably knowing some kids that went to school here, you know, that he went to high school with. So it wasn't a complete, you know, drop from <laughs> across the water. He had a feel. Um, but I think that's the thing that we like. Is that he's a guy that, that brings uh, a feel for how to play. He's a, he's a good defender um, in terms of playing pick and rolls. He, he's a he knows how to clog things. It's kind of an odd word to use, but uh, I think there was a play against GW where two different guys tried to drive the paint, and he just stepped up and, and got in the way. You know, it wasn't about blocking a shot or doing anything spectacular, but it was the right play, and he kept two different drives out of the paint. So, um, And he's a pretty good passer. That's probably the thing that he's a little underrated and doesn't get credit for, that uh, he has a feel for how to pass the basketball. So... Um, you know, I think this will do nothing but, but help him. It will help us, you know, as we continue to move forward. Uh, hopefully, you know, Brad's gets in foul trouble and we'll deal with it. But um, you got a guy that's got a measure of toughness that he's bringing to the table. For his size, that's exactly what happens. He's got pretty good feet for his size and, yep. and a big body presence in there that does cut down on some of that drive. Exactly, yeah. And you mentioned good feet. I don't know what, what is, you know, if he can dance or not, but, you know, uh, I'll let him – you know, deal with that issue. But, uh, yeah, he, do, he does move his feet pretty well. I know he wanted to, uh, <laughs> he wanted to cut, uh, uh, he wanted to cut uh, Perrier's hair when we was coming back from Dayton. I don't know how that worked out. But yeah. I, 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 I don't know if he was the team barber or what. Yeah, let's hope not. No, he, he might look like somebody, he was chewing gum, you know, <laughs> after, uh, you know, he got done cutting it. So, uh, he may want to stay with the, go into the barber shop. Our phone number is 704-332-0173. <laughs> this is the Alan Major Show. We're going to take a timeout right now. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk to Ilya Vakovic, our, our player guest here today, brought to us by Ortho Carolina. It's coming up in a moment. You're listening to the Alan Major Show from Signature Sports Group. Welcome back to the Allen Major Show. Our phone number is 704-332-0173. But uh, we're going to close the lines for a few moments here and have our uh, interview with Ilya Ivankovic, our special player guest, brought to us by Ortho Carolina. Ortho Carolina, you improved. And Ilya, great to see you. And uh, hope things are going well. Yeah, I think everything's going pretty well right now. It, uh, you know, season's winding down. But, uh, you know, as we go forward, we've got one more week left before the conference tournament starts. And, uh, unfortunately, the injury to K.J. Sherrill for the team, but um, you've stepped into that, that backup role now behind Chris Braswell. And, and uh, tell us, you know, what it's like. You know, it's late in the season. You've not had a lot of game action. So uh, talk about what it's been like to, to be thrown in there now in, in, in big, crucial games going towards the conference tournament. Well, um, I got a little bit of playing time. I hope I get a little bit more. And I already play against really good guys before high school, junior college, so it's not a really big deal for me. Ilya, uh, you're from Croatia, but you say Charlotte's kind of like your second home because you went to high school here. Right. Uh, tell us about how that occurred, how you, know, you ended up here in Charlotte, and uh, you know, what it was like for us being that far away from home, and, and uh, you know, how Charlotte has become your second home. Well, you know, I came here to high school. I barely knew English. And um, so I, I was here one and a half year in high school, and I met a lot of people uh, who I still stay, who I stay in contact with all this time. So I think that's one of the main reasons why I decided to come back to Charlotte. We just played George Washington. I noticed uh, when Nemanja Mikic was here, there's a lot of folks after the game stopping by to see him. And uh, how many people have you? 
uh, from high school and now in the college ranks got to know that are playing over here? Um, well, pneumonia. Uh, you, 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 what you, I, what can you repeat your question, please? Well, just back from your homeland, different people that have come over here and, and, and established a, a college career. I guess that has to make it easier for you, knowing that you have people around here that uh, that you have had some familiarity with, and and of course you've been here for a while now, so you you do feel more comfortable. Yeah, uh, there is pneumonia. There is few, pneumonia is actually from Serbia, but there is few guys uh, from Croatia and from Serbia that play for pretty good colleges in here, especially in Atlantic 10. We, we played against a lot of uh, Serbian, uh, Montenegro guys, former Yugoslavian guys, almost like half of the team, there was somebody from over there, one guy or two guys. Okay. Yeah. My, my biggest question, did you cut Perrier's hair because he said he wanted you to cut his hair when he was coming back from Dayton? Did, 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 are you the team barber or what, what was that all about? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I didn't cut his hair. But anyway, <laughs> his hair looked terrible. Maybe that's why I want you to cut it, because that, it looks that would not, bad. That would not be a compliment <laughs> if you say I cut it. You're not taking credit for that. Is that yours, what you're is, no. yours is growing in. Speaking of terrible, who gave you the mohawk? That was not good. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're just old school. <laughs> <laughs> it looks okay on Brad's, but I just... <laughs> no, Brad's actually cut after me. You set the yeah, standard I for the haircuts? I, yeah, I called Braz meeting me for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was an interesting thing that happened. We were traveling from, from Memphis uh, to Memphis from Arkansas before the uh, New Year. Uh, we watched a, a, a documentary on, on uh, the bus, and I'd never seen it before. It, and uh, it was uh, Vladi Divac and being from Serbia and, and the war between, you know, the breaking up of, of Yugoslavia, how he, he came up uh, playing for Yugoslavia on the national teams and all of his friends that he had. Uh, talk about what that's like. You grew up in that time. You were young and what was going on in, in your homeland. That must have been an unbelievable thing to have to experience and, and grow up with being so young. Yeah, I grew. Uh, I was born in 1990. At that time, the war just started. I remember a little bit like they were bombing us and we had to hide in the basement, you know, but there is a hate between us Croatians and Serbs all through history. It's just not this war. It goes lo li like for hundreds of years. So, I mean, I feel pretty good about them. I have, uh, like, Nemanja is one of my best friends here. I talk to him, like, every day. But older people still have problems with that. Like, for example, like, I don't know how my parents would deal if I meet Serbian girl really? and try to talk to her <laughs> or something like that. It would be a problem. What yeah. was really interesting, you know, is Vladi Divac was so close to all these guys, <laughs> then all of a sudden, because of something that happened on the, f mm -hmm. on, on the floor in a game, uh, he grabbed a flag and he pulled it away, and he wasn't trying to, I guess at that time, make a political statement. He just wanted to say, you all played for Yugoslavia. But the other guys took exception to it because of the flag incident, and all of a sudden, they just kind of froze him out, and nobody would talk to him. Yeah, you know, it was it was hard situation, you know, your people killing our people, like we're killing each other, it's hard to be friend. You know, we in a war, and just our families being killed, their families being killed, it's hard to stay together and just be friend. You know, I think Drazen Petrovic took that like really personal, that war, it was, th that was like the most violent war in, U in Europe after World War II. It was, it was really bad, hundreds of thousands of people died, so it's hard to be friends. How big was basketball in your country at the time you were as a youth? Was it was it a way to kind of come together again? Uh, at that time, Yugoslavia was superpower. I think they still have the most uh, <coughs> world championships, or they tied with US, USA. But yeah, it was really big. The city I'm from, Split, um, is the best European club of 20th century won champion, European Championship three times in a row, so it was pretty big at that time. Right now, uh, you know, like crisis, uh, financial recession, so clubs don't have that much money, so it's not really good, but back then it was big. Finally, when you were playing and growing up, did you gravitate towards basketball right away or were there other sports that you were involved in uh, that you liked as well? Uh, well, back home everybody plays soccer. Everybody plays soccer, so uh, there was a basketball came to my school like 
there was some coach who was teaching over there and um, so I decided just to give it a try. I was always taller than everybody, so I just decided. Was there a player you looked up to? Uh, no, really at that time. Like in, <laughs> a, in, a, in my school, I was the tallest. I mean, a pro player that you kind of modeled your game after? No. No? I don't think so. How about uh, this week coming up with Duquesne, some final thoughts going into the last week of the season, what you guys think you can still accomplish? Uh, hopefully I play a little bit more. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> well, uh, we hope so, too. Well, good luck uh, on, on Wednesday and, and again on Saturday against Xavier, and uh, thanks so much for coming by and talking to us. Uh, thank you. Ilya Vakovic has been our guest, the uh, Niners backup center, as the Niners get set to take on Duquesne coming up on this Wednesday night. It's been brought to us by Ortho Carolina. Ortho Carolina, you improve. We'll continue with more of the Allen Major Show coming up in a moment from Signature Sports Group. Welcome back to Wild Wing Cafe broadcast booth for the Allen Major Show. You can catch a video replay of the show on UNC Charlotte Cable Television 22 on Time Warner Cable numerous times Tuesday and Wednesday. Tune in to Channel 22 for show times for the Allen Major Show. Our phone number is 704-332-0173. We'll open the phone lines back up again. I want to thank Ilya Vankovic for coming by and, and speaking with us as uh, we get ready for the <laughs> Duquesne game coming up on, on Wednesday night. Coach, you saw the, the Mohawk. What do you think? What's that? You saw the Mohawk. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I, I better not comment on that because <laughs> he may fire a ball at me in practice tomorrow. But by uh, accident, accidentally, yeah, on accidentally, yeah. It's like a rebound and drill where a guy falls out of bounds, but he's twenty five. I'm twenty five feet away, and he, you know, he find a way to roll into me somehow. You know, kind of like. Uh, but no, he, uh, he he's a great kid. I tell you, he's a pretty intelligent guy, isn't he? He is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, he's a. Uh, we uh when we have a bus trip. I bought all the ESPN 30 for 30 episodes. Yeah, because I hadn't seen half of them. They're, they're, they're unbelievable. Incredible. Yeah, the, and the one you know about Drazen and and, and Vlade is it just it's captivating because you really get to see you know, just a whole another side of you know the basketball and playing what playing for your country yeah. means over there versus. You know, maybe our Olympic guys don't always appreciate that. I think they do now. I think Jerry Colangelo's done a great job of kind of re-energizing that spirit of what it means to play for your country. But when you look at that that episode, uh, it's amazing. But uh, but yeah, I bought all 30 of them. So they're awesome. But yeah, to, and that episode in particular, to be as close as those two individuals were, mm -hmm. and then to have it switch like forever. That. Yeah. Forever. Absolutely. And, and at the end of the show, it showed back when the war ended and, and, and Vladi finally went back yeah. to, you know, visit the family. See his parents. Yeah. yeah his it mom, was, I it was, uh, it yeah. was, it was really unbelievable. Yeah. It Great is. Great story. Yeah. No, I, that, that, that's a really good one. So anytime you guys want to borrow one, you know, let me know. We'll check it out. Yeah, that is a good one. I'll charge you, the, you know, a nominal <laughs> rental fee. Less than Netflix. Just because I know you. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> so. Before we get to the alumni uh, email questions, let's uh, look at the stat stuff for the week brought to us by Time Warner Cable. Save a bundle on TV, Internet, and phone. Call 1-800-TW-CABLE today. Coach, you know, one you just want to talk about, because it's something you touched on, on after the game, and, and for us to be successful, you say, you know, you'd like to have at least 12 assists a ball game, and, uh, you're at uh, 8 and 10, mm -hmm. 10 turnovers, which is not a bad number against St. Bonavich, but you want to get the assists up. Right. So as you look going forward, what are some of the things that, that you guys have been working on? Well, I think just trying to get deeper into the possession. And um, sometimes um, what you'll run into is you'll, you'll have a good shot. And, you know, when you're playing, every guy that's playing feels like he can make whatever play <laughs> – that he, you know, that he feels he can make at that particular time. And that's, it's a fine line because you want to make sure guys have confidence. And so you don't want to second guess everything that they do. But I think sometimes through film and through, you know, all the things that we're talking about is, hey, don't be afraid to pass up a good one because against this particular team that we're playing, not so much Duquesne, but whoever it may be, a great shot might be two or three passes away. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's three really types of shots. There's good, um, there's poor, and then there's gray. Gray, you know, G-R-A-Y. And a gray shot is almost like 18 seconds to go with a hand in your face. If it goes <laughs> in, it's great. But if it don't, you passed up on a good one. Yeah, and, and, and the point is 
you can get that shot with five seconds to go on the shot clock. Well, in the difference between the 18 seconds and five seconds, there could be a great shot that lies in that 13 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have a challenge one, it's better to have a challenge one late because you just might get something really good if you just kind of keep exploring. So um, that's the one thing, you know, just talking about getting ball movement and extending the possession maybe on offense, not so much holding the ball, but just moving the basketball a little bit more. So now, you know, the more guys get touches, the more decisions they have to make on defense, which increases their chance to make a mistake, which increases our chance to get the best shot. So it's all connected. Let's get to the weekly email segment brought to us by the Alumni Association. I want to thank the uh, group of young alumni that come out tonight. A nice uh, group here at Wild Wing Cafe University tonight. We appreciate you all coming out. And uh, Landy, we've got a whole bunch of questions to get to. Why don't you get to the first one? First one I want to do is we want to give a shout out to Tommy Holbrooks. He's a loyal listener, email regular, and longtime 49er fan from Bessemer City. He had surgery late last week. We want to wish him a speedy recovery. And I'm yep. going to get you off with a good one here from Rick Rutledge, Coach. All right. <laughs> Why do you control yourself so much when the officiating is so poor? <laughs> I can't believe the officiating this past Saturday. I can't tell you how many times Nicholson walked before scoring, but it was obvious the refs let it ride because it was must have been his move. I wish you would have jumped the official, maybe got a tee. The crowd would have respected you for doing so. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, uh, Saturday in particular, but sometimes in general, I, one of the reasons why I try to maintain some sense of, you know, being under control is that uh, I don't ever want to give our kids a crutch um, at all. And if they ever see me up and engaged, I, I, I want them to see me up <coughs> engaged in the game and engage with them. Uh, if they see me caught up in the officiating, mentally that gives them a crutch. Um, some games it's just a small crutch. Uh, Tiny Tim size crutch, you know. <laughs> uh, other times it's a big crutch, um, depending on the level of the officiating. But it, it, the more I'm doing that, I think sometimes the, it gives the guys a license to get caught up in. Now all of a sudden I'm not coaching the game and they're not playing, you know, for every moment that they're caught up in it. So we, we try to coin a phrase called next play, meaning that no matter what happens, bad call, turnover, missed shot, um, Whatever it is, you got to get to the next play because that's how fast mm -hmm. basketball is. Not like football, you had 30 seconds to walk in the huddle and change, you know, get regrouped and all that. I mean, you got two seconds and the ball's going the other way, and your mind has got to shift equally as fast. So, um, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll get some, you know, courage and you know, grab a chair or something. That's probably why they lock them together on the bench <laughs> now, so you can't just, you know, <laughs> so you can't just. Uh, you know, you know, yank one off there and, and hurl it across the floor. But, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about before the running joke because I may go out and have one of our players guard a guy, you know, guard the, you know, the ref that's the worst. Yeah. And uh, if, when he asks why, we'll just say, hey, you know, we thought we'd go out and guard the guy that's killing us the most, and tonight it happens to be you. you. That so, would be good. Uh, that. And that will probably get me teed up anyway. Yeah. But yeah. why not? Uh, this <laughs> next one's from Dave Brown. Coach says, what is the status of Mike Thorne? I'm assuming that this is a red shirt for him since we've not seen much of him. Can you discuss his development? Do you expect him to make an impact next year? And then also, in your opinion, what are the two biggest areas of improvement for the team in order to finish out this season and carry us into next season? I'll take the, uh, the second one first because that's kind of been fresh in, in our minds. I'd say um, the, the first thing offensively is continuing to move the basketball. And, and, and raise our level of, of execution, which is kind of will fall under that assist umbrella. You know, when we get about 15 a game, that's usually when we're successful. Um, and uh, so I'd say increasing our level of execution, no matter who we face here down the stretch, um, because we're going to see three different defenses, at, you know, at least here guaranteed coming up. Um, the second thing would be sustaining our, our, our defensive level. And what I mean by that is, um, trying to stay away from those pockets of two minutes, three minutes, uh, or those lapses of where somebody gets a, a run on you, you know, eight to two, six zero, oh, um, because those can change the complexion of a game. So I say if we could get better at two things, it's continuing to execute on one end, and then continue just to sustain our level of competition on the other end of the floor. And uh, and with Mike, yes, we we uh, decided to to. Uh, you know, sit him this year, and, and I think what it's done is it's done two things. It's cleared his mind because now you're not sitting over there wondering, when am I going to get in? 
And if I do get in, how long am I going to be in? So practices have kind of since become his games. And he's really improved. I think, uh, I mean, he's a kid that on a Sunday, yesterday, on a day off, he comes in and, and works out for an hour. Um, and, you know, I don't know until the day after our managers come and tell me. But when you see a guy doing that, that's a guy that's committed to, to wanting to be really good. So, uh, and he's just a puppy still. I mean, he just turned 18 last May. So, uh, he's, you know, six foot ten, almost six foot eleven right now, and well over 260 pounds. And he's been hitting the weight room. And, and I, I've been watching him just in the shoot-arounds. I mean, he has a nice shooting touch of the free throw line. Yeah. Uh, he's got a very high ceiling, I would believe. He does, yeah. And he's a little, uh, you know, he's got some bounce, uh, a little bit more than you think. And the thing that I'm excited about is that he, he wants to be good. Um, you know, he wants to be coached. Uh, he kind of came in with a maybe a limited base in terms of his, his experience and, and, and being coached. So I think it's helped him to free his mind and not have to worry about improving and playing time. It's just his mindset now has just been, hey, I'm going to improve. I've got another six, seven months here to grind it out until we start up again in October. And I think that's going to do nothing but help him because when we can work out guys in the summer, they pass that NCAA rule. Okay. So we get eight weeks of workouts in the summertime. And then we're also looking to take an international trip to the Bahamas right before we start school. So those two things right there are going to do That's nothing but help yeah. a guy like That'll him. Be big. Yeah. All right, Coach, we're going to take a break again, come back with more. Our phone number is 704-332-0173. There are some tickets available. Good seats for the Duquesne game on Wednesday. Final home game for the seniors, Dario Green and Javaris Barnett. Get your tickets at charlottefoydniners.com or call 704-687-4949. We're back with more. This is the Allen Major Show from Signature Sports Group. Welcome back to the Allen Major Show. Our phone number here tonight is 704-332-0173. Got about, uh, well, about 12 minutes left of the show here tonight. Got a home game coming up on Wednesday against Duquesne. Before after the game, come on over here to Wild Wing Cafe University with that ticket or ticket stub and get 10% off your entire order here at Wild Wing Cafe University. That's just coming Wednesday night with your Niners game ticket. Coach, um, Got a few more email questions, so let's try to get a couple more of those in before we uh, uh, talk a little bit about some of the individual numbers that I, I got to hear that, that are kind of impressive as we go forward. Okay. Coach, this one's from Ron Granger. It says, thanks for taking my question last week. How does a player as good as Andrew Nicholson end up at St. Bonaventure? Have you ever been to Olean, and <laughs> did he improve so much that he became a star, or was he under-recruited as a Canadian player? Well, um, I, I didn't know uh, very much about the kid. Um, and, and the thing I don't know, I, and I, this would be interesting as you crunch numbers, is what's been the, the progression of his stats, you know, from freshman to sophomore to junior to senior. Um, I have been to Ole um, you know, from being at Xavier, and now, you know, we went up there last year. It's, it's, a, it's a journey. Uh, you got to fly in the Buffalo, and then you got a bus. <laughs> you Hour know? and a half. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, they got the local Applebee's there is, fi is fine dining. So, um, I'll you tell know. you a funny story quickly. Yeah. We're, we fly into Buffalo, and we're busing to Olean, and uh, we took the wrong turn. An hour-and-a-half trip became a three-hour <laughs> and 15-minute <and> trip. <laughs> right. And I saw the sign, you know, St. Bonaventure, this exit. We just flew right on by it. But I didn't say anything. It's like, not my place. Right. About a half an hour later, I said, did anyone see the sign back there? <laughs> Three-and-a-half hours almost. Yeah. Um, I'll get the uh, – did he improve – so much that became a star was he under that part I'm not sure I, I would be interested to know that but do I think he'll play in the NBA yeah I do, I do. Um, you know what he projects as to me is probably a power forward um, you know those guys are smarter than me but I think when they project guys a lot of it's about who you guard so uh, is he offensively talented enough yeah there's no doubt um, defensively who will he guard in the NBA I think is going to be the greater issue uh, because right now, at his size, he's 6'8", 6 6'9". 6 uh, does he guard Kevin Garnett? Uh, or if he's a post player, does he guard Andrew Bynum? So <laughs> that the team that drafts him has got to make that decision. That's why they make the big bucks. But, uh, but that will be the issue with him in the NBA is who he defends as opposed to is he skilled enough or talented enough. He, he's got the offensive tools. Yeah, that was one of the things that Matt and I talked about. 
very smooth shot. I mean, his yeah. mechanics, everything, whether it's much far improved. away jumper, the little yeah. short left-handed hooks up inside. Yeah. I mean, he, he was very, very impressive in, underneath. Yeah, absolutely. Goes so. left, goes right with equal ability. But he has had a propensity over his years at St. Bonaventure to get into foul trouble. And that's going to be interesting at the next level when you're playing right. against guys that are quick in every position. Yep. You know, can he keep up with them? Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, him getting it, you know, creating his own shot because he probably won't be double teamed in the NBA. Um, because in the NBA, it's a shorter clock. you got to make a quicker decision. So now when you catch it in there, I mean, he's probably going to be a guy that's going to be have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one coverage. Right now, he's got the benefit of spraying the ball around and, and uh, you know, that type of thing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, in terms of his draft status. This question comes from Brad Dallas. Idaho, uh, Iowa Falls, Iowa, who watches the games uh, wow. on, on the Internet, Said Deuce Briscoe came off the bench and shot 42% from the field and 43 from behind the arc in the first five con conference games. Started the next eight conference games and only shot the ball 29% from the field, 24 from behind the arc. Based on the numbers, it appears that Deuce is much more comfortable coming off the bench. Do you think that is the case, or did he just fall into a shooting slump? And what was that? Uh, was that a factor in bringing him off the bench against the Bonnies in the last game? Yeah. Well, the last part of that is. Um you know, with it being the senior day, um, we wanted to start Dario um, with the ceremony, and that's traditionally what uh, most people do. So, um, uh, you know, I, coming off the bench starting, I really don't know if that's a factor or not. I think a lot of that, that's mental. I was going to say, yeah. Um, because a lot of times, you know, starting and playing, to me, are two different things altogether. There's times where guys can start a game and play 15 minutes, guys can come off the bench and play 26. So I think it's the quality of, of how you're playing while you're in there is the most important thing. And so um, I think the thing we just talked about with Deuce, you know, from last year to this year because of the Im improved depth and, or increased depth at the guard spot is being efficient. And, it, you know, last year, you know, he may play a game last year where he would go four for 12, um, five for 14. You know, and he, obviously the minutes were – uh, a little bit more extended, you know, up into the 30s uh, this year with more guys. And now what that does is that just for Deuce and for anybody, that forces you to be a little bit more efficient where now you're four for nine, uh, you know, five for eight, those types of things. So, And he's had some games where he's done that. So I think a lot of it's just mental and, and uh, making sure when you go in there that you're in, a, in the place where you make the right play and, you know, take the, the right shots possible and all those things. Coach, let's uh, take our final break, and we'll come back with the final segment. Just a few more moments left of the show. We'll look ahead with Duquesne coming up this Wednesday, then uh, on the road at Xavier on Saturday to close out the regular season. This is the Alan Major Show from Signature Sports Group. Welcome back. Just a few more minutes left of the show. The Alan Major Show here at Wild Wing Cafe University. I want to thank all the folks here at Wild Wing Cafe, too, for the, uh, the entire season that we've been here every Monday night. We have one more show scheduled. Now, next Monday night, uh, because we'll be traveling for the conference tournament, we're going to play on Tuesday somewhere. We'll be leaving sometime on Monday. So no show here next Monday. But we'd like to come back out here on March the 12th uh, if everything works out. March the 12th will be our final show, possibly. Uh, depending upon if we maybe can get hot and run the table in the conference tournament, maybe uh, a couple more shows. But uh, that's our schedule, March 12th right now. So put that on your calendar for the next Allen Major show here at Wild Wing Cafe University. Coach, I had a couple of notes I wanted to pass along that yeah. we can get to. But first, we have one more question here. And I uh, want to get in from Kenny Barnett. And he was talking about the, the injury to K.J. Sherrill. And he wanted to know how it happened and, and uh, you know, is he going to be uh, – uh, also in the mix for next season, he's been battling that knee, knee injury, of course, and uh, that's going to be an ongoing thing for him. Yeah, and th that one is the one that you don't know. Um, you know, we just kind of take that, you know, get to the end of the year, and we'll see, you know, where that's at in terms of the docs and, you know, do we manage it the same way we managed it this year. It's It's been odd. You, we've kind of had to manage him like a 10-year a NBA veteran, yeah. you know. <laughs> Guy practices and then he gets a day and then he does the mild stuff the next day. Then he plays again, you know. So, um, but uh, it was an odd deal. It, somebody kind of came down um, on, you know, his his forearm. They, they basically called it a broken forearm. And uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to get surgery. It doesn't look like it. I think they're just going to let it heal and 
it's looking like three to four weeks would basically kind of put him out of the mix. So, uh, unfortunately, because he's kind of been snake bitten uh, with some things in terms of injuries. Uh, but uh, I think with next year, uh, the, the arm will be fine. I think it's just going to be the matter of, you know, getting to the end of the season and getting with the docs and making sure that we – we manage you know that knee as best as possible because it's not so much the basketball part is you want to make sure a guy has good health uh, when he's 25 30 40 years old uh, down the line and healthy enough to bounce his kids on his knee without <laughs> feeling any pain and you know that type of thing coach we got one minute left of the show so i'm gonna try and get this in really fast sure uh, you know senior day of course coming up on wednesday with Dario green and javaris barnett being their final game at halton Here's a note on Javaris Barnett. He scored 351 points in his first three years. He has 333 this year, so closing in on 700 for his career. He is first in the A-10 in A-10 games with uh, an average of 2.43 threes made per game. And he's shooting uh, 48% in conference games from behind the three-point line, which is third best in the conference. So you know, we've talked about his development over the years, but he's become yeah. uh, uh, you know, a, a force now on the offensive side for us. And uh, your final thoughts on him and Dario and this being the last show before their last senior game. Yeah, it, you know, the thing I, I mentioned to this about somebody the other day is that you feel bad that you couldn't coach them their whole careers uh, because, you know, the way we've kind of done things in terms of our skill, skill instruction, our development approach, you know, we've only had them for two. And, uh, you know, Dario's had some fantastic games for us and, you know, came in off the bench against GW, had a lot of energy. And so um, – you know, I still think he can jump in there and help us, you know, as we continue to move forward here down the stretch. And, and JB has basically embraced the, the opportunity we gave him. I, mean, I don't have magic, magic dust or anything like that, but he's embraced the opportunity. And um, a lot of credit to him. It's a great – I hope the, the paper does an article about him at some point, about the path he's traveled from red shirting all the way to now, probably having a chance to go play overseas. Coach, good luck Wednesday night, and uh, good luck for the rest of the season. We'll see how we do in the conference tournament. The Allen Major Show is brought to you in part by your Carolina Ford dealers, delivering versatility and unsurpassed power and best in class MPGs. Compromise nothing in the seven-passenger 2012 Ford Explorer. Visit your Carolina Ford dealer, fans of Charlotte 49ers basketball. Have a good night, everyone.